this June, the first stop in our new nomadic life was the country of Croatia. We'd never been and knew practically nothing about it, so we were excited to learn and the country did not disappoint. Over more than six weeks, we explored most major areas of the country. Starting in the capital and largest city of Zagreb, then on to the world-renowned Plitvice Lakes National Park. From there, we headed to the coast and Istrian Peninsula using Opatia as our base. After that, we moved down the Dalmatian coast, first to the second largest city of Split, then to the small seaside village of Dravenik, and finally the tourist mecca of Dubrovnik. Along the way, we learned a lot about the country. Some things fantastic, some disappointing, and many lessons learned. We also built up a list of places we want to explore on a return trip. One of the best things we discovered was the concept of the Sobe homestay. Airbnbs before Airbnb existed, Sobe's are a 1980s Yugoslav innovation that reportedly started in Split. When tourism to Diocletian's palace took off, the government decided to give private individuals a significant tax incentive to rent out parts of their homes. Today, Sobe's are everywhere. Some are shared spaces, some completely separate apartments. Many are in excellent neighborhoods, including old towns where a traditional hotel would be nearly impossible. Some have patios or terraces. There's nearly always a kitchen or access to a shared kitchen, but no microwaves and always some way to do laundry. We always got our own bathroom and usually tried to get a one bedroom, though sometimes we had to get a walk up to do so. Markets were another of the best things about Croatia. We found fantastic ones in every city and town that we visited, which went perfectly with having a kitchen in our sobes. The first great thing was the selection of fresh fruits and veggies. There were also usually other options like breads, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and the local brandy, rakia. The larger markets even had clothing and flowers. There was always a seafood section in coastal towns with pretty good selections. Split had an entirely separate seafood market. Unfortunately though, most of the seafood was not very cheap as apparently the Adriatic is overfished and they have to source it from elsewhere. Cheaper options tended to be shrimp and cuttlefish. To finish out our shopping list, butchers, bakers, and supermarkets are usually nearby. In all of Croatia though, we only found one pretty tiny Asian grocery. Swimming along the Adriatic coast is some of the best that we've ever found. Most everywhere, any time of the day, the water is clear and calm. Most areas we found had free public access. There are also many choices of where to go. There's always an option to go a little farther away if you want to avoid crowds. Many days, we'd walk around exploring the area in the heat, then drop in for a quick swim to cool off and resume our walking. In every direction we went, there seemed to be another place to go into the water. One downside though is that even though snorkeling is heavily advertised and the water can be ridiculously clear, there's usually very little and sometimes simply nothing to see. Not only is the ocean water great in Croatia, 
but also so is the tap water. The quality was very high everywhere we went and easily drinkable, even in public bathrooms. We never had to worry about buying bottled water as you can usually top off water bottles. Some restaurants and cafes won't serve it for whatever reason, but most are proud of the quality and happy to serve it. There are also numerous public water fountains around with designs that are a whole other level from most anything in the U.S. Another great thing we found regarding infrastructure was that almost every establishment, including surveys and museums, had their own Wi-Fi. There were occasionally even districts that offered free public Wi-Fi. Additionally, most everyone in the service industry spoke passable English, and you could contact almost every business through the WhatsApp messaging and voice app. As far as transportation, most often we took buses and ferries. They had extensive routes and were relatively cheap, especially when you had no check-in luggage. Cars offered more flexibility, but point-to-point -point rentals incurred an extra $100 fee, plus gas was always expensive, around $9 a gallon, and tolls and parking could also be expensive. The downside of buses and ferries were that very few left on time, even fewer arrived on time, and some were even canceled without notice. Travel can wear you out, and massage is the best way that we know of to relieve sore legs and backs. Thai massage is the single best style that we know of, and we were very pleasantly surprised to find at least one in every town that we visited except for Split. The quality was comparable to what we found in Bangkok, and while more expensive than in Thailand, it was cheaper than massage in the U.S. If being folded into a pretzel isn't for you, all spas offered other, less intensive styles as well. We truly loved being in Croatia and definitely want to return. Even with over six weeks in country, we couldn't visit everywhere we wanted to. Our top places to see when we come back are, first, to spend more time in Split. Ten days just wasn't enough to see everything around including the island of Brach and the town of Stari Grad on the island of Far. The island of Korchula, the supposed birthplace of the explorer Marco Polo, is also on the list. The coastal towns of Zadar and Shibenik, both north of Split, are also supposed to be fantastic. Natural wonders that we missed include the Kirka National Park and the source of the Satina River. We also want to return in off-season, May or September, so we avoid the peak season heat and the crowds. We hope that you found the wrap-up of our time in Croatia informative and enjoyable. If you did and want to see more from us, please help us out with the YouTube algorithm and hit like on the video, subscribe on our channel, and feel free to share. Fala.